Breaking news. Within the last hour, we have been told that Attorney General Bill Barr is going to be giving a 9.30 a.m. Eastern press conference tomorrow to accompany the release of Special Counsel Robert Mueller's report on the Trump campaign and Russian, Russian meddling in 2016. And the president now saying he may be taking questions after that as well. Joining us now on the phone to discuss, Fox News contributor and former independent counsel Ken Starr. Judge Starr, thank you so much for being here. What would you ask the attorney general about the report? Uh, why have you redacted? <laughs> That's a big question, and I think uh, Bill Barr is a very able and thoughtful uh, lawyer, very experienced. Obviously, he served as Attorney General of the United States under President Bush 41. And he will say in his wonderful lawyer-like fashion, we've now seen him not only in the confirmation hearings, but in the uh, House hearings, the Senate hearings, he'll simply say, I'm the Attorney General of the United States. I must follow the law. And here is the law. And the law requires him to redact grand jury information, national security information, and then um, that obviously does not, as a law uh, officer, want to interfere with ongoing investigations. That, that's a matter of common sense. Uh, I think the fourth category is going to be a very intriguing one, to protect the privacy of individuals who are on the periphery. So journalists will appropriately have a lot of questions, uh, certainly about the fourth category. And uh, I, I expect uh, Bill Barr to acquit himself very ably. He's extremely smart. Now, I know this because I reported to him when I was yeah. serving in the Justice Department. David, as you know, as Solicitor General, uh, Bill, uh, Attorney General Barr, became the Attorney General under President Bush 41. He did a terrific job for some complete honor and integrity. So let me just uh, editorialize by saying, hey, the attacks on Bill Barr are just off base, yeah. and frankly, they're unfair. Yeah, Mr. B that's right, Mr. Starr. Yeah, Barr does enjoy bipartisan respect. So, what about the spying allegations, though? Are we going to hear any more about that? Because obviously, that caused waves last week. Well, I'm sure there'll be questions. I mean, you guys will know better than I do what the journalists may want to know. But uh, I applaud. I realize the nomenclature got everybody shook up. But surely, uh, people of goodwill will want to know how all this came to be. Why did we have a special counsel investigation? You know, we've had reports and we've heard more about Fusion GPS and, 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 and this kind of stuff, but we've just had reports. Let's get to the bottom of it. And uh, so, uh, look, if, if, if I'm Carter Page, I'm getting spied on. Right. So you can say, oh, no, no, you're not being spied on. There's court-authorized surveillance that you don't know about, don't you see? So uh, I think it's a little bit, and I understand the words do count, and some words are harsher sounding than others. But the practical reality is a matter of common sense is that we were spying on Carter Page and, and, uh, and others connected with the Trump campaign. And here is the one of the strongest uh, indictments that I have seen, but I'm just saying, let's find out the, the answers. Why wasn't the Trump campaign notified? And that's what Bill Barr testified to. Uh, Why didn't you notify the campaign? Why didn't you notify Rudy Giuliani and Chris Christie? I mean, these are very respected people. Uh, Judge uh, Steve Forbes here. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, this report is a humiliation for Mueller in the sense that uh, he didn't find anything. His indictments were all had nothing to do with the uh, collusion with Russia. They were peripheral to that. Uh, but obstruction of justice. Uh, legally, I think uh, Barr is right. But how is he going to uh, make that case when the Democrats are going to say, oh, the president opening his mouth is an obstruction of justice? <laughs> how, how does he handle that? Oh, I think that will be a nice, soft pitch right down the middle of the plate for Bill Barr. Bill has thought this through, and of course he came under some criticism. Welcome to Washington. You open your mouth, you get criticized. That's fine. For his memorandum back in March, uh, right a, a year ago, uh, to the then Attorney General Jeff Sessions, and he analyzed very thoughtfully and carefully the obstruction of justice statute and then in our constitutional order, where the president stands. And I do think, I agree with the Bill Barr memorandum, and I think what you'll see tomorrow when those questions come is an extremely persuasive to fair-minded people, leave partisanship aside, 
to fair-minded people that, yeah, this how can it be obstruction to fire James Comey? It's just not. Are we still talking about the Mueller report here? Because it sounds like we're talking about some kind of investigation into the Democratic Party. It's the Mueller report that's coming out tomorrow. There's no question in my mind what it's going to show. It's going to show deeply unethical but not criminal behavior on the part of the president. There's no voter in America who is fooled or misled about where this president stands on ethics, and he won an election. And if Democrats aren't careful and go on hyperventilating about this for the next six months or a year, he might win another election. But I, I, don't, I don't know how we got into this uh, investigation of the Democrats on the Mueller report. Well, very easily, because uh, there, there are people who said, well, how did this come to be? And, uh, and I'm one of those who said, was power misused? Did the FBI somehow, and I mean the FBI leadership, I've said time and again, and I continue to say it, I admire the men and women of the FBI. There are thousands of terrific, honest people. But listen, something extraordinary happened in American history. A presidential campaign was investigated without, I'm repeating myself, informing Chris Christie and Rudy Giuliani. That is presumptively odd. It's worse than odd. Judge, do you think we're going to do? You, do you think we're going to get the uh, justification of the deputy attorney general to do this investigation, uh, bringing in a special counsel in the first place? Usually, it has to be a specific yeah. crime. What was the justification that Rosenstein used to make this happen? Are we going to see that? Well, I think there's are fair questions that we don't have entirely the answers to. What we do have is uh, Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein, who I hold in very high regard. Uh, Referring back to Jim Comey's uh, March uh, 2017 testimony before the House Intelligence Committee, and if you go back to that, right, you got to unpeel the onion, and if you go back to that, you do see that there were statements by Jim Comey about crimes that may may have been committed uh, in connection uh, with you know, the, the Russian. Let's just call it the Russian. Yeah. Hey, uh, no. uh, Judge, yeah. I, I just got to ask one final quick question. You are worried uh, that it's more than just Mr. Mueller, after all. He had a big staff, and, and we know that a number of those people on his staff were very anti-Trump. One was Peter Strzok before they found his memos. Uh, are you concerned that the staff may have uh, some of their bias show up in, in what is released? I am concerned. I'm not jumping to conclusions. Let's wait and see. But I would just say this, you know, history does have lessons for us. When I came under a, a very serious consider uh, uh, excuse me, criticism uh, many years ago, uh, I retained Sam Dash, legendary Sam Dash, yeah. Watergate fame, now lost to history. And he approved, Sam Dash approved every word in the Star Report. Now, I hope that Bob Mueller, when he testifies, will say, I want the American people to know that I'm fully aware of the political leanings of my staff, but here's a check and a balance that I put in place. Yeah. Star had Sam Dash, I had Mary Rowe or John Doe. I think there will be every legitimate interest in saying to Bob Mueller, Mr. Mueller, you're a great man, you're a patriot, you're a Marine, Semper Fi. Did you protect against the possibility of at least the appearance of bias? All right. John, you Judge wanted Starr, to go? John, go ahead. John, like, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you said his last question, David. I apologize. Judge Starr, honor to have you on the show. I want to ask you about Bob Mueller because the expectations of this report have been to extremes on both sides. The expectation that it would take down the president to the other extreme that it's a witch hunt. Where do you, obviously, it's going to land somewhere in the middle. Where do you think the legacy of Bob Mueller lands after this report's released? I think it will be mixed just because he punted on the obstruction of justice issue. Uh, about which so much has been said, I'm not impressed by the charges of obstruction based on what I know, but we'll see what the, the report reveals. Uh, but I, I think that uh, the American people should step back and say, why did we have to wait for two years to find that essentially there was not proof, whatever you want to call it, of collusion? And my mantra has been of late, why did we go down this road? That's not Bob Mueller's fault. It may not even be Rod Rosenstein's fault. Perhaps we need to relook at the entire uh, way in which we handle these kinds of very mm. sensitive questions going to presidential integrity. That's what Congress is for, and that's also what special commissions like the 9-11 Commission is for.